Matt Barnes, 14 years in the NBA. So Patrick Beverly, uh, a, you know, a foot shorter, is all in on Kevin Durant. And I just said this earlier. You've heard the old saying, uh, you know, and people like, what, what, what's the saying I was using when you're, um, you live in a bubble? People will say about rich people. Well, they live in a bubble. They don't understand the real world. Warriors are a little bit of a basketball bubble. The perfect <laughs> coach, the perfect GM, right. Steph's good. You got the bouncer and Draymond. I look at KD and I think, Patrick Beverly's in your head. You know, when you go to New York, you're not going to have all this insulation you have in San Francisco. <laughs> Could I make the argument when I watch Patrick Beverly get into KD's head, KD is kind of easy to disrupt sometimes briefly. It depends on how you – I mean, you, I can understand your argument. Um, you know, you, he's still averaging 22 a game. Uh, I think he doesn't get the second tee in the first game if it's a close game. I think he kind of did that to send, like, a little message. I think more than anything, I think the refs are a little too caught up in that matchup. I think they're kind of – this is the playoffs. It's going to be physical. There's going to be some grabbing. There's going to be some pushing. But they're trying to call every – ticky-tack foul and no one wants to see either of those guys fouled out you know it's better for the game for both those guys to be playing but you know some would say he, he's in his head I don't necessarily think he's in his head I, I think Katie he's been very efficient both games even though he shot nine uh, eight times last game I think he will obviously the nine turnovers are what really stand out to me but um you know for him to foul out the first time ever in his playoff career like that was a flop right there that fake little elbow that was a flop I think the refs got a little too caught up in the situation okay so the refs are too much into the individual <clears throat> battle that one that one-on-one -on -one individual battle I think so okay Okay. What do I what do you make of the Clippers? I mean, I gotta tell you. I love it. If I'm Kawhi Leonard, yeah. aren't they just missing me? To me, the, all the, what they're doing right now is they're giving the Warriors a hell of a battle. Like, you know, like I thought they would, but they're making themselves the number one destination this summer. Um, you know, they have a, a great owner, great front office and Lawrence Frank, Jerry West. <clears throat> Uh, you know, one of the better coaches in the league, and they have all their, their their role players set. The one thing I really liked about Doc when I played there is he always used to tell us, be a star in your role. You know, do what you do the best way you can do it, and you can tell all those guys are doing that. You know, you you can't – Lou Williams is playing great. Harold's playing great. Um, you know, the, the rookie hit a big shot last night. You know, Gallo's playing Gallo. So they are set up – I mean, they have – and they have a spot for two max free agents. So imagine, you know, imagine, I'm just saying, you know, a Katie and a Kawhi going there. I mean, that would, they're, they're you know, they're the 2020 Look at champions. That. You see Balmer up you know? there with Doc Rivers? Oh, he's going crazy. You know, they, and they had a camera on Balmer the whole game, and I love that guy. You know, he's just so into it, patiently waiting, patiently waiting. He couldn't, it, he couldn't hold his excitement in at the end. He just had to let it go. It was funny. Yeah. Do they have any chance? I don't think so. I, I think they're, no they're boogie def now. I, I definitely think they're going to be respected. And, and like I said, they're selling themselves as the number one destination. But uh, I, I don't see the Warriors losing uh, this series. And I just think, you know, if they're fortunate enough to make it as far as they can, it's not going to be easy this third time around. This is a, They're going for a three-peat. It's no. not going to be easy. There's so it's going to be a battle every single series. Yeah, no, there's a real fatigue. I mean, there's a reason we've never had a four-time champ. I mean, it's it. Michael Jordan at some point left basketball, and I remember reading stories about it. He was just, he was just emotionally drained, drained from it. It's a star-driven league. So football, Brady can win, 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 win. But it's about the system and the coach. And you can – I always felt this about NBA guys. A football player, Julian Edelman, can put on a cap, go to Costa Rica. And be fine. NBA players can't disappear. Mm -mm. LeBron James goes, yeah, I'm going to get a coffee down the street. Who's the 6'9 dude? Oh, it's LeBron James. Yeah. Like, basketball is so star-driven that for the greatest players, in the, where is Kevin Durant? In what neighborhood can Kevin Durant hide no. in the offseason? So I, I do think it just emotionally, it's just draining for these players. Right. Um, let me shift into this. Zach Lowe is a legitimate NBA reporter, had a podcast, and Zach Lowe came out and he said on his podcast with Woj, another legitimate guy, friend of mine, no, these are NBA guys, that um, – Agent, it appeared to be an agent told Zach Lowe that there's two orbits with the Lakers: the Lakers orbit, and then there's the LeBron orbit. And powerful people in the league have said, "Listen, we don't want, we don't want those orbits. We do not want to send our player to quote LeBron's team. So if you hire Ty Lue with LeBron, Anthony Davis, it's just LeBron's franchise." Uh, for, I always push back when people said, nobody wants to play with LeBron. And I thought, oh, come on. D-Wade did, Bosh did, Kevin Lyon. I don't buy that. But there does there are tipping points. Could I not at least argue that LeBron sought power, he got it, and it may turn off a lot of dudes? Uh, it's tough to say. 
I think any great franchise goes through their star players or star players when they're going to do any kind of moves. Um, I just think there's so much uncertain about their front office, whether people think LeBron is running the team. They've handed the keys, what it looks like, to Rob Palenka. And throughout the league, he's not very well liked or respected. And you hear a lot of stuff about backstabbing when it comes to him. So to me, do you want LeBron? Do you trust LeBron? Or do you trust Rob? Or, you know, they're a situation now. So I don't know who is to blame in the situation. But at the end of the day, the, the players have a say over their agent. Their agent may not like it or want to send them. Okay, but at the end of the you're, day. you're a star. Right. Would you go there? No, I'd go to the Clippers. You'd go to the Clippers. Yeah, if I if I'm like if I'm a if I'm a Kawhi or a twenty three point a game. Yeah, and I'm about dude. to get max. No, I'm going to go to the Clippers because Why? there's just too much. Like I said, uncertainty in the front. The front office scares me more than anything. Winning starts at the top, absolute top. You can hire the best coach. You can give them another superstar. But if that management is not set and tight and understanding and everyone's on the same page, you're not going to go. Look at the Knicks. You're trying to say in the last however long they haven't had any good coaches. It starts at the top. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just if, if the front office is un unstable, that scares me more than anything else that you can put together. Okay. So I, I uh, Joy is not going to like this, but I have to say this. Zion Williamson came out yesterday, and Zion Williamson said, um, I'm going to play in the NBA. Last year was the best year of my life, which is impossible because he was not paid. And, of course, basketball is no fun in college unless you're paid. Mm -mm. And I look at this and I think to myself, there's 370 Division I programs. That means there's 4,800 players. Nine will play pro ball. And they have to wait nine months. Insane, right? I don't think you now. Now, by the way, I know we watch Duke and Kentucky and Kansas, and the games are sold out. Most of those gyms are empty, and these are not profit centers. I think college basketball was awesome for Zion. Absolutely. I think we've we've taken college basketball, and I get guys wanting to get paid. I get it, but Zion Williamson can call for the rest of his life. Mike Shashevsky. I need tickets. I need swag. I need, I need advice. I need an agent. I need. And Mike's going to say, yes, 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 right. yes, yes. I love that Zion Williamson's like, I just, that was the best time I've ever had in my life. I, I Did you like college? 1,000%. And we talk about this all the time in this UCLA group chat. Outside of having kids, it was a dream come true to play in the NBA. But the best time of my life was at UCLA. The More most, than the, the NBA. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's your last. And getting to the NBA is a blessing and you get money. But a lot of responsibility comes with that. A lot, like like you said, mentally draining. It, it mentally drains you. I was Travel. fortunate enough to play for 14 years. It's mentally draining to be a professional basketball player. Don't get me wrong. We get paid a lot of money. But <clears throat> college is your kind of your last time in that quote-unquote bubble. When you're with your friends and you're going to class and you're flirting with girls. Before it all gets real, you know, really real. So I think. Uh, you know, Zion was a great shot in the arm for college basketball as a whole uh, this year. It was must because, I, to be honest with you, I hadn't watched college basketball. I couldn't tell you how long I'd watch the tournament, but I would never watch the regular season well, games. Well, you and the rest of the country. Right. You know what I mean? So he was must watch. Every I, every chance I got, the twins and I were watching, you know, Zion. Oh, so. look at him. I love his video. I love watching him play. <laughs> and, and and I think, you know, that this is uh, on another point. This is why I think the NCAA is making a mistake not letting LaMelo Ball play college basketball. He'll be must watch to you. The, the NCAA needs players like this to draw like you said uh, the, the you They're know fun. Eyeball, eyeballs are down you know uh, as far as watching college basketball during the regular season you get a lament you know zion was must watch tv they broke all kinds of numbers when he was on this year and then like lamella would be the same kind of caliber oh. next year must watch you need you're going to watch all of lamella's games so i think they're making a mistake not allow him to play quickly um last year i said i went a little overboard last i get very emotional matt sometimes i'm emotional and last year ben simmons came out and i said that's the closest thing to Magic Johnson I've ever seen. I, give me a break. Six, ten and a half guard. Sees the floor. Dribble. He better defender than Magic was early. And now I watch him and I'm like, what, am I, what do you do with Ben Simmons? He can't shoot outside eight feet. What do I do with him? Am I, was I too high and now I'm too low? I watched last night, and yet last night he played well. But God, night tonight, I don't know what I get with him. What is Ben Simmons going forward? I think it's... I think as a whole, we just want everything so fast. You know, what is the second year, third year? Well, second year playing, third year he got hurt so first year. second year, because you only learn while you're playing. To me, he just has to impose his will. I think he's letting the fact that he can't shoot and what everyone else is saying about it get him in his head. At the end of the day, he's going to be bigger, stronger, 
than anybody else guarding him. So if they sag off, you got to attack, make plays for yourself, get to the – can't be afraid to get fouled and get to the foul line. He's not a very good free throw shooter, but you got to embrace getting to the foul line. And then you got to score it. You know what I mean? I think last night was a perfect – he imposed his will. And I, I, I put it on Twitter earlier in the day that he needed to impose his will – and that's what he did last night with the triple double. Uh, you know, LeBron. It took little LeBron a little while to get a jump shot. Although his jump shot was, you know, further ahead than Ben Simmons' jump Jason shot. Jason Kidd was pretty ugly. Early. But these guys still attacked and made plays. You see, at times when Draymond is not feeling his shot and they sag off, he's attacking, going into dribble handoffs, throwing lobs. He's still downhill attacking, putting pressure on the defense. I think Ben Simmons lets people off the hook when he's just very passive with the ball or doesn't want to possibly go to the go to the basket and get fouled. So he has to embrace who he is, great player, still has work to do, obviously, with his jump shot, but he could still impose his will throughout this, uh, you know, throughout this series. And Philly as a whole scares me from the standpoint of if they realize how talented they are. Oh, my God. Outside can, of Golden State. The, name a better starting five. You can't. You can't. You if, I, if you give me Reddick, Embiid, <clears throat> Butler, Simmons, who am I missing? Oh, Reddick, and Tobias Harris. Yeah, yeah. But Tobias Harris, people thought, was going to get the max with the Clippers. He, He's their fourth best player. Very talented. I mean, but to answer the beginning of your question, what separates, you know, Good from great is consistency, and Ben's not consistent yet. So once he becomes a consistent, I just think understands the game more. He's still young; it's still only his second year. But now, you know, now like you said, name a better starting five. If they click, oh. they can easily make the finals. Yeah, I love watching Philly play. Uh, Hi, everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.